welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Business Incorporated. We're coming to you from Channel's television. Now, China's finance minister, Lu Jiwei, said that several rounds of financial and monetary policy consultations this year ahead of the upcoming G20 summit have generated many results. Now, this is in preparation of that summit, which is coming up in Anzu next month. China's finance minister, Liu Jiwei, says that several rounds of financial and monetary policy consultations this year, ahead of the upcoming G20 summit, have generated many results. Financial and central bank officials from G20 members decided nine prioritized areas and 48 guiding principles for structural reforms. The policymakers for the first time proposed using monetary, financial and structural reform measures to boost growth and stabilize outlook. They also agreed to push reforms of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. In February, we were very nervous about the fluctuations on the global financial market. In the G20 finance ministers and central bank governors meeting in Shanghai, we decided to use monetary, financial and structural reform measures to boost economic growth, which received very good responses from the international community and played a positive role in stabilizing the economic fluctuations then. The minister said the policymakers also pledged to avoid competitive devaluation of currencies and oppose any form of protectionism so as to facilitate global economic recovery. The world's policymakers praised China's efforts in the financial and monetary policy consultations. The series of financial and monetary policies consultations are fruitful. The policymakers spoke highly of the role that China has played. The tasks set for these consultations at the beginning of the year have been basically completed and the results will be submitted to the Hangzhou summit next month. You're welcome back to the program. Now, the federal government has been advised to implement the right policies that would kickstart economic growth. According to the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the federal government should put in place quick winning strategies, which will include reviewing current trade policy measures in order to reduce the pressure and costs on investors and citizens. The chamber also states that the exchange rate depreciation has, has an inherent structural correction effect on the economy. This leads to too much of a shock on the states of the economy to combine high import duty regimes with a weak and rapidly depreciating currency. It points out as well that the impact of fluctuating forex on import values and other port charges have escalated costs beyond measure and paralyzed many businesses. Okay, let's get back to a top story which is on the federal government's plan to make the investing environment more attractive and then joined in the studio by the head of international relations at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and the Industry, Mrs. Temi Tokwe Akitunde. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. And thank, thank you, you for, for having me. Thank you for coming on the program. Yeah. I'm sure you've been following the story about uh, the drive to attract investment into Nigeria. How would you assess our state of the business environment in terms of the ease of doing business? Okay, um, looking at the ease of doing business in Nigeria, if you are familiar with the latest World Bank rankings, it ranked Nigeria 169 out of 189 countries. This is not good for the giant of Africa. And just like President Mohamed Buhari stated at the Tokyo International Conference on African Development, Nigeria is ready to open up its market for more foreign investment, for, for more foreign investment. and also at the same time, Nigeria is ready to um, enforce policies that is doing business in the country. So we are looking forward to what he has said, what putting it into action, and let us see where we go from there. We all know that moving from one point to the other may not be an easy thing. Uh, it's, it's easier said than done, but how do you think in the short term we can work and moving closer to where we want to be? Okay, if you look at the things that were discussed during the Tokyo International Conference on African Development, where President Mohamed Buhari made this um, uh, made this statement regarding the ease of doing business in Nigeria. Nigeria has the potential and we have foreign partners that are also ready to support us. But we need to create the enabling environment
by working on infrastructure, by having the right regulatory framework, and by making sure that our monetary policies as well, they aid the growth of the economy, that there's stability. So we don't have so much of policy somersaults, which is what we have had in recent times. So how do you think the government should go about doing this? Working with the private sector, which has always been uh, one of the areas that has been pointed out several times, the need for the private sector to be more involved in creating this enabling environment, or, or is it just about having policies to drive the growth? No, so public-private partnership is very, very important. In any developed economy all over the world, you get to see that a lot of... Um, a lot of policies are made by the government, but the, private, but the economy is being driven by the private sector. So it's not just for us to make the policies. It is for us to create the environment, invite the private sector, dialogue regularly, discuss on the issues of affecting business, hear their own opinions, hear what they want you to do for them as well, and put it into action. So it's not a one-way thing. It's a two-way thing. It's a dialogue. But it's not just a dialogue that stops where it starts. It's continuous. And it's something that um, we should encourage, irrespective of the government that is in power. Okay. What can we learn from other countries? You know, it wasn't only Nigeria that attended that conference. Apart from our president, we have the, the uh, host country, which That's is Japan. Kenya. Japan, but okay, that, was okay, being, okay. that was held in Kenya. Yeah, yeah. But other countries are also coming to attend, actually attended that uh, event, but what do you think should be the take home for these other countries? Okay, when you look at, when we talk about the take home, let's look at what the conference was all about first. The Tokyo International Conference on African Development started in 1993 by the Japanese government to try and um, foster relations between Japan and African economies. Now, based on this, Japan has done quite a lot in the short time that this thing has started. Here in Nigeria, let me give you an instance, we have the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, which has trained a lot of Nigerians in terms of medical research and what have you. We also have the Japan External Trade Organization, that's JETRO, which has helped facilitate trade between Nigeria and other countries as well, so, and Nigeria and Asia. So now, in terms of other countries, it is obvious that the things that Japan has been able to do in Nigeria, they can also replicate it in terms of foreign partnership, economic development, and they've actually done a lot of this. If you look at um, in terms of foreign aid, technical assistance to African countries, Japan has tried in these areas, but they could do more in terms of the fact that it is not just giving the aids, but also making sure that the environment is Which there. Which the money is good. Yes, and also that there's this self-sufficiency. So you just don't continue pumping money, pumping money, pumping money, but that Nigeria and other African countries are also able to develop themselves. It's very so, important. So there is this kind of competition among donor countries to see who would be in on the Africa. side. In Africa, who would be on the side? We have China, we have the U.S., and yeah. now Japan. Japan. Yeah. Okay, we hope that uh, everything that's been discussed at that meeting is actually worked on by not just other African countries, but also Nigeria. Of course, the ease of doing business is very critical for attracting investment in the Nigerian economy. Just before I let you go, yeah. the, uh, the LCCI was talking about the state of the economy and uh, the issue of course, doing business is also very key mm -hmm. in this respect. What do you think would be the quick wins, the quick win strategies that you want the government to put in place to be able to achieve sustainable growth in the short to medium term? Okay, if you look at the new forex policy, you know, relatively new, there has been a lot of policy somersaults even since it came out. You know, you have this um, rejoinder up, you know, of the policies and things like that. It's important for any economy that is growing to, to have stable economic policies. Okay. And not just that, okay, you make the policies today, then tomorrow okay. you have another, you know, touch, and next okay. tomorrow you have another touch. Was well, you know, stability in terms of very yes, policy formulation and implementation is very thank important. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Demitokwe Akitunde, Head of International Relations at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce thank you very and much. Industry. We'll go on a break now. We'll be right back.